I think the eyes popping matters because it was for the first time I ever really watched myself and I'm like, I'm like, I said to Chris, I said, I look insane. And she's, yeah, but you only look insane on TV. <laughs> that's a good thing. <laughs> I said that's well, that's comforting. Uh. But topics for the new show, I think um, for the new si this new run, the next group, uh, we're probably going to get into analyzing pieces. I don't want the show ever to become a price guide where, oh, this is worth this and right. let's move on. That's covered and it's covered well. There's no need for me to do that. I want to get into interpretation, the psyche of the collector, the psyche of the seller, the psyche of the buyer. I want to get into the stuff that, the, 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 the mechanics of the business that keep the business going. You're talking about a business that just seems to go on. People enter it, they spend their lives in it, they die. That information's gone. Somebody else picks it up and, and runs with it. That's what I want to discuss. I want to get into that stuff that, that I think about when I'm not here. I'm sitting down and I'm just like, oh man, that's weird. And I think about these things all the time, obviously, but that's where I want to go with the show. And the nice thing about that concept is two things. One, we don't need a big crew to do it. And two, it doesn't stop. It's a constant flow of creativity coming in about these topics. And, and, and they are inherently interesting. Anytime you talk about wins and losses and money, a lot of people want to see that and hear that. They might not even like antiques. They're like, this is nuts. You guys did what? You paid what? That stupid phone booth I bought. That was insane. Do you remember that phone booth? I think I got a picture. If I got a picture, I'll put it up. But the truth, I, I don't even know what I was thinking. I was going through this weird time where I wanted, wanted you know, Gabe. I don't know if you know, my dog. So anyway, Great Dane. Big undertaking. I didn't know what I was getting into. My own fault. I didn't research. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't research it. Boom. Actually, I did. I scratched the surface. I didn't get into it heavy. But the reality is, at the house where the breeder was, they had a phone booth from England. The guy was a, a it was one of the red boxes. The guy was a car importer back in the 70s. And he said what they used to do, they'd load the car parts in the phone booth as packaging and then they could ship it, which seems insane to me. I don't know if it's a true story, but who knows? I don't know. I don't even care. Whatever. It was cool. But it was sitting in this field. It was beautiful. It needed a full restoration, but it was beautiful. I was like, wow, that's really cool. So uh, <laughs> I said, what do you want for it? And he said, 4,500. I said, are you nuts? 4,500 sitting in a field. I got to come here. And, and mind you, it was, it's so heavy. So it weighs seven ton, seven. 1,750 pounds, and it was sunk in the mud, and this is the dead of winter, it was sunk in the mud four inches. So, and it, if I remember, it had 80, 81 or 82 panes of glass, and the rest of it was cast steel. I mean, you couldn't get a more miserable thing to move if you tried, and I knew nothing about them. And there was rot on the bottom, so you didn't have that. So anyway, I said, you crazy. So he said, well, get back to me. I said, sure, I'll get back to you. So whenever went by, and we ran into each other, actually. And he said, what do you want to do on that phone booth? I said, nothing. I said, you want 4500 I said, that's crazy. He said, what do you pay me? I said, 15 All right, I'll take 15 Worst thing I could have done. The worst thing I could have done. Right when I said it, as it came out of my mouth, I'm like, ah, oh, how did that come out of my mouth? And I do that every now and then. A lemon. And I'm like, what? 15 because I know now I'm on the hook. Now I gave my word, you're getting your 15. Now I gotta move it. So I call Kenny, he's a good, good friend. Kenny helps me move horrible items. And uh, I said, Kenny, we got, a, we got a red box phone booth. He said, the one's from England? I said, yeah. He said, really? <laughs> I said, yeah, it's even worse. He said, what? I said, it's frozen in a field. And he's just, I can hear him on the other end of the phone. He's like, ugh. So, he said, what'd you pay? I said, 15. He says, that sounds like a lot. I said, yeah, well, I gave my word. He said, all right, when are we doing it? And it was, it was, it was either New Year's Day or the day after New Year's a few years ago. I think it was, I think it was January 2nd. I think it was January 2nd. I don't know, three, two, three, four years ago. Anyway, we meet in the field. Actually, we met somewhere else, got to the field. And uh, it was frozen, so we got a bobcat, and, and we, we got a winch, and we're rocking it, and, we're, you know. Anyway, we get the thing loaded up. We didn't break any glass. We didn't break anything. We didn't hurt ourselves. We got it here. It took us about six hours to move. I got it in here. Nobody wanted it. 
Nobody wanted it. Everybody liked it. Everyone said, wow, this is great. This is beautiful. Yeah, who wants it? Nobody. Nobody wants it. I couldn't, I couldn't sell it. Nobody wanted it. He sat here for nine months, ten months. I'm like, I'm screwed. <laughs> I did it myself. We're talking about screws. I did it myself. I ended up selling it for $1,500. <laughs> I made nothing. I had to pay you Kenny to move money. it. lost money. I lost money. <laughs> I had to pay Kenny to help me move it. That happens, you know, and, and, and I'll tell you, yeah, I think I'm good in this business. It happens to everybody.